everyone. You are watching Recover Recover Alaska's First Taste. This is a new monthly series, series, wow, I can talk today, normalizing sober and sober curious lifestyles through community candid conversations, taste testing mocktails, handcrafted by Alaska's own bartenders. It is going to be a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the skies are blue, the trees are green for the first time in basically a thousand years. Um, so I am very excited to be here with you guys. I'm your host, Justin Williams from Justin's Alaska Eats. Um, I am a food reviewer and critiquer representing Anchorage, Alaska and all the its beautiful food and restaurant glory. Um, joining me today is our guest, Kat Moore. Can you say hi, Kat? Hi, hello. Thanks for having me here today. Absolutely. Mr. Andrew Aquino, say hi, sir. Hello, and thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Oh, well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to pronounce it, <laughs> to mispronounce it. Thank you. You're so gracious. And Mr. Bartender Jen Mitchum, how are we doing, sir? Doing good. How's it going? It is a go. And you're from Amalga Distillery. That's in Juneau? That's right. Juneau, Alaska. All you guys are looking beautiful. All you guys are looking sharp. And I'm in here with this sweatshirt. So whatever. We're just going to roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to see you guys. Um, it is May. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So in this episode, we're going to feature an Asian inspired mocktail called the Palm. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of different topics about, um, you know, Asians and Asian Americans, um, this the the and the Pacific Islander community, and what we can do to acknowledge them. Remember to be inclusive as we represent and appreciate um, them as people and their community and their culture today, and also have maybe a, a bit of an uncomfortable conversation, which I feel is needed to push change forward by talking about um, the Stop Asian Hate movement, which this month is more vital than ever. Um, so I, we already kind of introduced ourselves, but um, I kind of want to go around the table just one more time since we know your guys' names. I want to introduce you to the audience uh, properly. And uh, so Kat, why don't you tell us uh, who you are and what is it that you do? Right on, thank you so much. Um, my name is Kat Moore and I'm a musician and a music teacher here in Anchorage, Alaska. And, um, and I love to go out and enjoy the food culture in this town in addition to the entertainment culture. So um, yeah, I, I spend my days and my nights usually teaching piano and playing piano and a gamut of other instruments. And uh, yeah, eating good food, drinking delicious things and um, just enjoying our community and all the vibrance that it has. So. Beautiful. And I have an additional question for you, Miss Kat. Um, so today we are drinking mocktails, you know, um, what, what does the idea conceptually of a mocktail as opposed to, you know, an alcoholic cocktail mean to you? I think for me, um, mocktails have a vibe of sort of conscientious Epicurean intent. <laughs> um, mm. Something that you're like, ah, oh, I'm just so thirsty. I'm just going to slam down this glass of water or this orange juice or whatever. It's something that requires um, time and careful preparation and thought and creativity. So for me, it seems like um, a different way to embody my love of food and beverage, but in a way that also feels really geared towards health and sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, I really love to make healthy food and I also, you know, enjoy a gamut of different beverages, but it's so nice to, you know, have a beautiful sunny day like this and be able to spend some time and intention and create something with nuanced flavor and delicacy in the middle of the day and, and you know, not feel like a glutton. So I, I really enjoy it as a creative opportunity and a way to kind of, you know, bring in different vitamins and minerals in, um, in a way that we don't traditionally think of. Awesome. I think that's radical. Um, yeah, I just became a proponent, a true proponent, I feel, of healthy food and healthy living. Part of the whole food review idea that I started in 2020 is the fact that I have a five-year-old daughter and she eats what I eat. And I think at the beginning of the pandemic, we were all just kind of hyper incentivized to just DoorDash fast food all the time. And I wanted to make a change. And, and that really helped us uh, decide to do something a little more innovative and creative that also uh, perpetuated, you know, the, the, 
you know, the local food community and, and kind of put the spotlight on that. And so you would be very proud of me. I just started eating tomatoes last month. Whoa, congratulations. How many, Look at that. How yeah. many does it take? Is this like three decades, two decades in? I just turned 32 last month, so. Oh, oh happy belated. Why, well, thank you, birthday. sir. Happy oh. tomato birthday to me. Yeah. <laughs> That is a new thing, tomato birthday. That's going on my tombstone. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, the lycopene, uh, is it lycopene that's in tomatoes? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have Mr. Andrew Aquino. I do not know you, sir. I want to get to know you just as the rest of the audience does. So please inform them who you are and what is it that you do? Okay, so I am so happy, first of all, that um, Kat's did not define herself by um, her profession. She said exactly everything else about mm. who she is. Um, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna follow suit. Um, I also play piano. Uh, I I studied for. Um, we'll talk about the Asian American Heritage Month. Um, I started at three years old uh, and stopped at 19. Um, so I had the uh, very stereotypical um, Asian um, upbringing. Uh, let's see what else. I am gay, yes, Asian American, first generation American, um, and first generation college graduate. So I, you know, I'm extremely happy to be part of this conversation because um, we're going from this month to next month, Pride Month, and almost all of my intersections <laughs> are converging mm -hmm. in in one moment. Uh, so. Yes, honored to be here. Um, and then I will um, speak on my profession, I guess. Um, I'm up and I am broad joining y'all from Fairbanks at the UAF campus here in the Wood Center um, pub. Uh, and I um, work as the doing special projects for the university system president, Pat Pitney. Yeah. Yeah. Heck Are you gonna yeah. ask me um, a um, one of those questions too? Shall I give my take on what um, you asked Cap? You absolutely shall, good sir. What does a mocktail mean to you personally? Mocktail mean to me? Um, it mocked, the word mocktail has been constantly redefined for me. Um, mm. At first, uh, the first year I became sober, I always saw it as a substitute for um, whatever alcoholic beverage. So I would say, hey, can I have this, but virgin. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. then I realized, you know, um, I am still feeding the same part of my brain where, mm -hmm. um, the addiction lies. Uh, so I kind of decided to separate that. Um, and the, I just have, um, you know, oral fixation, I guess. I always have a water bottle, some sort of beverage that's right next to me to throw back. So maybe it's a little lit, a bit, a little bit less, um, intentional. Um, than what Kat described, but mm -hmm. I, um, it's great to just drink um, anything that's not water or soda um, <laughs> and still still make it feel like it's special. Um, yeah. And I, it's a, uh, mocktails mean to me at this very moment, um, just an opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. gather with other people that um, have gone through the same journey um, and it's a drink that, or we have drinks that we can bond over, um, and, you know, recovery, um, any type of addiction, getting over it. It's not a journey that you have to take alone and it looks different for everybody. And, you know, maybe some people might not like mocktails. Um, maybe it is the water path for them, but we have, we have mocktails. And I like what you said. You said that, you know, being sober, you know, as a journey, you don't have to do it alone. And it kind of, you kind of have a community um, around that. And I think that's very beautiful because when I do think of alcohol and I'm not a very big drinker, I never, almost never go out. Um, even when I was at UAA going to college, the bar scene was not my scene. I would usually go out to, to, to play music or to watch other musicians play music. Um, but there was a community around the bar scene. There was a community around, you know, getting the friends together and enjoying alcohol. And I really love that Recover Alaska is about sober and sober curious lifestyles and responsible intake of alcohol, you know? And so you have two sides of this fence that um, kind of push this idea 
that you absolutely should have a community. You do not have to do either journey alone. And you're a great thank example you. of that, Mr. Aquino. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for being here. Hair whip. <laughs> Woo! You do it so much yeah. better than I do. <laughs> And last but not least, we have Mr. Jen Mitchum. So, Mr. Jen Mitchum, let the people know who you are, where you are, and what is it that you do. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, right now, I'm I'm here at Amalga Distillery in Juno, Juno, and uh, and yeah, I've I've been working here pretty much since the beginning, around four years ago. Um, and it's been uh, an incredible opportunity to be here, um, working both in the tasty room and in, in production. Um, and over the years, I've had a, a really great opportunity to kind of work with different flavors um, and experiment with different, uh, different types of drinks. Um, and, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to kind of um, see if I can contribute at all to uh, this, this, um, yeah, to you know, mocktails and and everything that you're doing here. I, I think it's great. Absolutely. And um, same question for you, sir. And I think it's a it's a special one for you as a bartender, um, as someone who creates these drinks, who devises them, and gets to share that art with the world. What does a mocktail to mean to you? Yeah, I think I think it's not too different than a cocktail, really. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, there's all this hype around drinking with alcohol, but it's like if you really look down at the core of what matters, mm -hmm. it's like okay, what matters is being able to be social, right? What matters mm -hmm. is being able to care about the drink that you're making. Um, to, to like savor it, to appreciate it. And those things do not require any particular ingredient. They do not require alcohol. Yeah. I like that, Jen. The, um, you just made me think that their um, drinking culture could actually be separated into um, two subclasses where yes, um, folks that um, don't drink could be part of drinking culture, but absent from this I, I truly think there's an alcohol abuse culture as well. Mm. So, so we can still be part of the party, but not rage. I think that's a, <laughs> I, I've never thought about it that way. You, you painted a good picture for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a kind of a, a very interesting way to look at it. And I would thoroughly agree with that. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm very excited to have all of us here. We're different people in different areas of the state. Um, Kat, you're in Anchorage, right? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Sounds awesome. Scary. We got a little bit lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you and me are in Anchorage. Um, and we have, Andrew, you're in Fairbanks, right? Mm-hmm. I, um, I, Anchorage born and raised, but I came up here for love. And it's, and it's stuck. Yeah, the same exact year um, I got sober, actually. Wow, yeah, double whammy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I met I met my partner um, and he actually helped me through this process mm. uh, greatly. Um, he was not afraid at all to start conversations with me and just check in like, hey, how are you doing? Do you want to go to this place? I get it if you don't want to. And I was able to share with him like, hey, if I don't want to meet with friends at a bar, I'll tell you. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to baby me. Um, I'm an adult who can make decisions myself and hopefully measure my strength. Um, so he's actually been on the recovery journey with me, even though he's still a casual um, mm -hmm. drinker. For um, sure. And I, yeah, I really appreciate it. Now it's been five years and how many, four months and <laughs> four days, whenever the, oh my goodness. whenever <laughs> January 13th. Remember whenever January 13th was that um that's the date Jan 13 2016. Yeah. Wow. That's Thank beautiful. You. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. That's such Thanks. An inspiring story. Finally yeah, we got married last year too. Oh. Ah, <laughs> you went all the yeah, way, cheers. sir. Oh my Whoa. goodness. <laughs> cheers. Right. 
Oh, oh my uh-huh. goodness. Well, congratulations to you, sir. And speaking of cheers, um, I want to get into this conversation about, um, about Stop Asian Hate. But before we do, I wanted to switch things up a little bit because I find that the best conversations sometimes happen around drink and around food. And so I actually want to try our drinks first, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, t- I'll pass it along to Mr. Jin, sir. What have you got for us today? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the drink we're going to do today is called the Palm. A simple drink. Um, if you have a tin shaker or some type of shaking device at home, uh, you can go ahead and grab that. Um, and uh, we'll use a mixing glass, a uh, mixing tin, and we'll add in the ingredients one by one. Um, so the first ingredient will be, yeah, all my granite juice. We're going to add one ounce. to our mixing tin, and then some water. And this is where normally like something like a spirit would uh, take this component, but we're not using a spirit, we're using water because what we're trying to get here is uh, dilution um, so that you're not straight up drinking like pomegranate juice. Right making something a little bit more, you know, nuanced. There's like, okay, there's a little bit of pomegranate juice, but it's nothing too crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, we're gonna add in uh, lemon juice, about three quarters of an ounce. And then this here will be, um, what would be like the sour element of the drink. Mm-hmm. And uh, to balance that, we're gonna use the mint syrup. Um, and if you're at home, um, one way, and, and you, you don't have the ability to just like buy mint syrup at the store, you can't find it. Uh, one way you can quickly make it is you just, uh, you mix one cup of hot water, one cup of sugar, and about 25 grams of uh, mint leaves, and just let it steep for about 30 minutes or so, and then cool and you're good to go. And then you strain it, of course. Um, but yeah, um, so you add about three quarters of an ounce of mint syrup, And then if you've got some basil, luckily here in Juno, we've got um, a company called Juno Greens and they provide some locally grown basil that we Wonderful. can use, which is super awesome. Um, and you can just actually throw the basil leaves straight into the tin. Um, and after that, we're just gonna add ice and shake it. This is my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, we'll want to shake it for about anywhere from eight to 12 seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, this creates like the right amount of dilution and also chills the drink um, to a cool amount. All right. And once you do that, you get a strainer. If you have a fine mesh strainer, that's even better. That way you can catch some of the broken up basal Ooh. particles. Ooh. Perfect. Uh-huh. And the final touch, you can, if you want to, you can garnish it with a little sprig of basil, and then you're set to go. I don't know if you can all see that there. Look at that beauty. Hey, yours is prettier than mine. Yeah, what the heck, dude? Yeah, it's like you do this for a living or something. I know. Mine looks like something out of like Sweeney Todd or something. (laughs) (laughs) But it looks, that looks phenomenal. Um, what do you guys say? Shall we all try it? Well, actually, before we do, first impression, what do you think of the look of the smell of it? What do you think it's going to taste like, feel like? I'm curious 
as to whether it's, I, I believe it's going to taste sour, but then there's the pomegranate, which has like a sour, but also a sweet. Yes. You have the mint syrup. And so I'm, I'm kind of like intrigued as far as whether it will be a sweet or sour drink, or if those two things will emulsify into something just absolutely perfectly balanced. It almost has like a rich savory smell in a way. Yeah. I you cheated got? before and I, um, I tasted <laughs> it already. But I can tell you that I was um, pleasantly surprised because I was hoping that it would be on the tartar side. Mm-hmm. I uh, love anything that involves a little bit of a, a pucker. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is golden. Um, I didn't smell it until now. And um, mm-hmm. now I kind of wish I put more basil in because uh, it, smells, oh, it smells delicious. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited. So what do you guys say? Let's try it. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, wow. That is not as sour as I was anticipating. That's not sour. No, the, the, it's not overridden by the palm. Mm. Um, not at all. It looks like a sour though. So I see what you were saying. It totally looks like a sour. And I got the pucker. And you got a little bit of that pucker, yes. The most annoying thing that I find with um, things like lemonade or sours or even uh, like fruity sodas is when I don't get that pucker. Yeah. You know, it's like buying a bag of sour candy, but it's not sour at all. Yeah. And so it's just extra sugary. It's the most annoying thing. And I just "Ah, just want to chuck it and throw in the trash. This is not bad. Yeah, first world (laughs) problems. (laughs) <laughs> the balance is so nice though i agree it's like we have the the little after pucker but then the sweetness and the diversity of the flavors is really nice but that water that dilution balances it out perfectly so that you don't feel like you're gonna have sour mouth after you drink it or that you're gonna be like sweeted out yeah this mm-hmm. is a, a nice you could drink this all day long and be totally delighted yeah uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, Jen, and Jen, is this your concoction? Did you create this? Yeah, actually, um, I, I, yeah, here at Amalgam Distillery, uh, we're kind of limited on what type of spirits we can use in general. We really had to think outside the box in order to kind of get these like same flavor profiles. So like originally I was like, well, if I can use Campari and if I can use Sweet Vermouth, you know, how am I going to make something that's like, you know, has this element of like, maybe like a Negroni where it's like a tiny bit bitter, you know, but also sweet. Um, and, and yeah, that's kind of where like through this exploration, that's kind of where I came up with like those mix of uh, ingredients. Absolutely love that. Thank you so much for showing us how it's made, for making it uh, beautifully and tastefully. Um, this is fantastic. And I cannot wait to actually try this again uh, later on. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to want to try this again and again this summer. Um, so thank you so much for that. This, this is absolutely delicious. Um, and while we're drinking, by all means, keep drinking, guys. Enjoy the drinks. Um, and while we're at it, you know, I, I quickly want to get into this month um, and Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month and kind of talk about um, Stop Asian Hate a little bit, kind of a movement that started in March of this year. Um, The Atlanta spa shootings kind of prompted this um, this hashtag, Stop Asian Hate. And obviously it's more than a hashtag, but um, it's kind of a... um, I don't even know how to begin to talk about it. It's it's it, it breaks my heart to think that it's something that we need to talk about that is necessary. Um, because we look at America, and especially we look at Alaska, where all of us are in, we're extremely diverse. Um, and a lot of these sociological things that define us somewhat are often used to unite us. I feel like in the past year and a half, they've been used to divide us. They've been weaponized in a, in a sort of way. Um, so instead of celebrating, right? And communicating with and loving on our Asian and Asian American and Pacific Islander 
uh, brothers and sisters, we've kind of pushed them away, isolated them, and we don't really know how to help. And maybe sometimes we feel like we don't need the help because we weren't part of the problem. So why do we need to provide a solution, right? And and so some of these mindsets, uh, toxic and otherwise, I feel like we just need to communicate and talk about. So guys, whoever's up for discussing it, what does stop, stop Asian hate mean to you? And why is it important? Well, we'll go- It's a tough one. It's a big one, yeah. But... <laughs> Um, so, of course, um, in addition to what our former president um, referred to the uh, COVID-19 as, um, you know, China virus, Wuhan virus, um, you know, I, I'm thinking about right, right now, and South Asian it really emerged at a strange time, uh, because, you mm -hmm. know, historically, um, I kind of feel like passed the, uh, what is it, Chinese Exclusion Act um, when it was <clears throat> um, pulled away. I can't think of the legal word in the, in the 60s. Um, you know, there was that huge wave during the Vietnam War um, of uh, folks immigrating to the US. And then now the folks like me, this um, first generation Americans with uh, <clears throat> one or more immigrant parents, um, we're starting to uh, we're in this strange place between uh, folks call it acculturation, I still call it assimilation, mm -hmm. um, and enculturation. Uh, and so with assimilation, you know, I'm living in this strange world between uh, my folks' beliefs um, from their Eastern beliefs, filial piety, collectivism, and these Western beliefs that are pretty um, combative with mm -hmm. each other, where right. we're all about um the individual in the west yes. in the west yes uh and i still struggled that with that with many areas but with um stop asian hate uh <clears throat> back to stop asian hate and it's uh parallel to um uh, the blm movement right now mm -hmm. it's so i found it so inspiring that um Asian Americans who have always been about assimilation, sticking to the status quo and compliance, have been given um, an example from the BLM movement um, of how to communicate. Um, and also, we, I'll say we, we've been empowered um, after like seeing our brothers and sisters um, doing the same thing. Because, you know, like uh, helping one minoritized group really helps all the other minoritized groups huh? absolutely so that's why um that i think that's where the dissonance is between uh well tangent dissonance between blm and all lives matter folks is they right. don't realize that um um helping one group helps everyone else yeah mm -hmm. uh so i guess i moved from the movement itself to what i personally realized um is kind of empowering um yeah. But uh, if I were to even tailor it further and relate it to this conversation um, and Recover Alaska, it's, uh, <clears throat> I was just quickly reading up before this, the, the um, among all Asians, the um, age group of 20 to 24 is at the highest risk um, of suicide. Mm. And um, that coincides with um, the legal drinking age, right? So compounding, wow. um, just leaving um, your immigrant folks' household, going to college, being exposed to drinking, and not knowing exactly where you fit in the puzzle um, can be pretty disruptive and damaging. And I'm an example of that. Um, so the it, it took a long time. And I decided that um, in order to focus on like my place in society that uh, uh, I couldn't use alcohol in my life to distance mm -hmm. myself um, from centering myself. Yeah. Whoa, I just went everywhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you did mention something about very interesting about Alaska though. Unlike yeah. the rest of the states, um, it, the, um, the a Asian American population is the third highest um, of all immigrants. And I count white folks as immigrants because mm -hmm. in Alaska, you know, 
<laughs> they right. immigrated here too. Absolutely. So, um, white folks and then um, um, Alaska Native and then Asian folks. So mm-hmm. it's um, you know, Asian. It's we're, we're also the fastest growing um, immigrant population in the country, um, yeah. but the most underreported um, folks that um, suffer from alcohol misuse uh, mm-hmm. but because of those cultural um, attributes that I described earlier. There's a bunch mm-hmm. of shame, the piety, right. and um, the, uh, the strange, um, uh, what is it, complex, that male complex where mm-hmm. um, you're not a man unless you can drink tons. And yeah. the whole, you can just add on compound the fetishization of Asian men and women. It's, uh, it's pretty complex. Um, mm-hmm. But I am an example of how the complexities can be understood, yeah. still exist, and embraced instead of pushed away. Right. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. And I and I can co-sign so much of what you said, um, especially considering where we live. I think it's it's you know ge- geographically we we just have to be aware. I mean, <laughs> we 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 can't be blind to what's going on around us in the world. We can't be blind to um, the rise and the plight, right, of minorities and and all demographics, really. And it's just like you said, when we help one minority group, we help all groups. And that is such a, um, such a bold thing to say. I almost say frightening, because I feel like that will, that scares people. When people get scared, they don't know how to love. I feel like love and fear are complete opposites and you, you can only really do one or the other. And so people hear something like that, the truth, right? And then they're like, oh gosh, I, I'm so comfortable. I don't wanna change what I'm doing. I don't wanna change my mindset because it's comfortable for me. Um, and it's that kind of that individual mindset that you were saying, America is a very individual individualistic um, country. We define our success by what we can do by ourselves, making up, making it on our own, not carrying the previous generations with us, let alone revering them. Once you hit a certain age bracket, you're kind of, you know, gone in the wind. You've had your time, old time, or it's my time, blah, blah, blah. Instead of, you know, celebrating, you know, those generations that raised us and brought us up, you know, blah, 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 blah. But um, I love everything you said, dude. And, you know, as 2021 gets along, I'm already seeing a lot of recovery from 2020, which is great. Um, and I just hope that stop Asian hate, that the hate stops so much that we will not need to be reminded of it. Mm -hmm. It stinks that, um, hate actually emerged. I used to think that, um, the exact opposite of love was actually apathy because hating something means you have feelings about it. But, um, so maybe before the, um, COVID-19, it would have been um, stop agent apathy. Mm. Uh, um, so, like you know, the just because of uh, inherent cultural traits, uh, we've been yeah. kind of sidelined for a while, and yeah. that is that. Um, I'm not gonna say it's okay. That's just what happened. Right. It has happened. Um, but now, at least my generation, um, I what we've seen happen to our parents and grandparents so we don't want that to happen to us right and we can't be we can provide a voice to them yes but then also come from a lens that or use a lens that's a little bit more accessible to um other folks who are Mm non-asian absolutely um and that's a beautiful perspective you know it everyone I feel like in America, if we all define ourselves as Americans, has a, in my opinion, a responsibility to support and uplift our fellow neighbors, you know, um, regardless of what we look like. And again, like you said, kind of the breaking down of those sociological barriers so that we can actually see that person as a human being first before all the other titles without discrediting them, because that is extremely important as well. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a balance, you know, and food and drink, some of those things, some of those very rare elements in life, I think that help us see 
brings everyone to the same table, which is part of why we're doing what we're doing today. Um, so I, 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 I love that. I'm talking a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have such wonderful things to say, and it's it's so interesting to hear both of your perspectives on it. Um, Andrew, I had never known those statistics regarding suicide for Asian Americans in that bracket. And when you think about, you know, substance abuse, which is a real thing, there's sort of an alcohol arc, you know, we're too young for it, then we join it and our bodies can handle it because we're young and still growing. And then we get over the curve and suddenly, you know, whether whether you choose to drink mocktails or not, your body is probably like, hey, you should try this. But, but when I think about, you know, Asian American and stop Asian American hate, I think about a lot of what you're saying where when we support one group of people in our country, or one portion of our constituency, we're really helping everyone. And, and I think that, you know, you also mentioned like what we saw, what happened over the last couple of years was not okay, but it is where we are. But I think, you know, over the last couple of years, instead of teaching tolerance, you know, on the national sphere, we were taught isolation and divisiveness and, and hatred. And so to me, I think part of it, you know, this, this movement is not only about um, helping Asian Americans, which it absolutely, you know, and Pacific Islanders, like absolutely, you know, is an important part of being an American, period. Right. But it's also teaching tolerance, which will then, you know, expand and, you know, ripple out to, you know, finding unity amongst all of the different cultures and the different people who fall into, you know, American citizenship. And I think that that's, that's something that is so incredibly important. And it is something that I do feel like is taught, you know? And so I feel like right now is, it's a wild time. It, it makes me simultaneously deeply sad to think that we're at a place where, yeah, you'd have to say stop Asian American hate. But it also looks like an amazing opportunity to teach a whole new generation to love. And so, you know, I think that the more we talk about it and the more we share, you know, it's, it's so great to have these discussions and to hear, you know, from someone coming from that cultural perspective, you know, how we as, you know, white Americans can be allies and how we can understand what you're going through. Like you were saying, you know, that collectivism versus individualism where you might be experiencing something but not feel okay about speaking out about it because of the way that you were enculturated. And so it's really, um, yeah, thank you for sharing it. Just it's so great to hear and it's so nice to be able to talk about this. Justin, thanks for bringing the topic up as well. Yeah, really awesome. yeah of course. Um, it It's a topic that needs to be talked about, you know, and that's what we're celebrating this month. So, you know, we're, we're diverse. Why not? Why pretend like we aren't? Right. Um, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, this, why... we have a beautiful, a beautiful array of colors on this screen right now. We I really do. This. Yeah. We really do. Um, as for the drink, um, and thank you guys so much for that conversation. And I hope that everyone watching this will be encouraged and incentivized to continue it um, with their peers and their friends and enemies and frenemies and neighbors. Um, but, uh, you know, food and drink is one of those things that brings us together. So if you want to have a conversation like this, take someone out for coffee, take someone out for a burger, take someone out for a drink. Um, and intake responsibly, you know, um, these sorts of things are very, very important. Um, and food and drink is an excellent progenitor, a great place to start to have these things. So um, ladies and gentlemen, um, what do we think about the drink from scale from one to five? Is it mind blowing? Are you gonna be drinking this all summer? What do you guys think? Because mm. I am, I'm, yes. I I am in general. I'm not a, like a, a super sour girl, but this may be the turning point drink for me because it's Ooh. got that like rich umami of the pomegranate in a way. Yeah, so I give it a five out of five. Ooh. Oh, oh, Jen, you have a masterpiece on your hands, sir. Um, <laughs> I'm you. only rating my um, the drink that I made myself, and I gave. I'll give the drink that I made myself with these non-experienced hands a four, <laughs> but but um, if I were to give, put more basil in it, then I think I would give it a five. Like the same amount that you did. And I didn't um, 
shake the basil inside uh, my mixing cup either. So I think gin probably has the best tasting one. I mean, I'm sure yours look, tastes really great, Kat. Like it, lo it looks good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's fine. Like it's there. That's a drink that exists in your in your space. But gin is fair. probably really good. I mean, I don't know. Given the choice between those, <laughs> my drinkers, it looks pretty chill. <laughs> Quite so. So okay, Kat, you'd give it a a five, Mister. A Mr. Aquino, you give it a, what did you say? You give it a four. Boy, I don't know what I'd give mine. 90% sure I didn't do it right. <laughs> so I would probably, I'd give it, I'd give it a four, I think, because even in tasting it in the way that I made it, I, I, I can taste what it's supposed to taste like, right? And so given practice and given time, I think this is a recipe of, that I will greatly enjoy, love to share. And of course, Jen, give you credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I am, yeah, this was excellent. Thank you so much everyone for joining me. Um, I think in conclusion, I just wanna say to anyone watching this, if you um, liked our drinks and our discussions or, and our insanely attractive faces, then go ahead and share and like this and let your friends know because we're going to be doing more of these. Check out recoveralaska.org um, and support what we're doing. Talk to your friends about what we're doing. I'm so happy to be a part of this, to be here, to be your host. And um, that wraps up our first episode. So we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.